Hi everybody, Sophia here from the Prenatal Snug and today I'm joined by Carol from the Highland Maternity Voice Partnership. So Carol, welcome and I'm so excited to see that you've recently launched this Maternity Voices Partnership locally. Tell us a little bit about it and all about the launch, it's exciting. Yes, it's really exciting. Um, and like everything else, we were put on hold a bit with the COVID pandemic. So we've been working away in the background for 18 months or more to get this launched. So it's really exciting that it's now happened. So a Maternity Voices Partnership is where <clears throat> a group of NHS um, professionals, midwives and other people involved in maternity care, meet up with a group of ordinary people from the community who are interested in maternity care um, and they work together to try to um, help to improve maternity care um, and make sure that women's voices are being heard not only women their partners and families as well um, are being heard by the people who are designing and planning the services for the future so it's really exciting and it's such an important thing for women to be able to do. I mean, more and more these days, I'm seeing a lot of kind of birth activism around where everybody's, you have a right to a positive birth, to a better birth. And it's true. And ultimately, of course, it's, it's what everybody hopes a woman will experience at that time in her life. So what kind of things are women coming back to you with? What kind of information can they volunteer to you? Well, sometimes it's small things that make a difference. And... Um, you know, some women have mentioned things like um, they didn't realise that when their midwife was on holiday that she wouldn't be answering her usual mobile number. And although it's on there, um, it's usually on the maternity notes and the information women get who you should call when your midwife's on holiday, it's just worth flagging that up. And a few women have already mentioned that. So <clears throat> that's something that we can give a bit more publicity to and, and once the midwives are aware of it um, we can make sure people know about it so that's quite a an important thing um, but it's quite easy to do something about it so sometimes the small things are really important to hear about um, and we've also sense. heard from people who've got longer stories and uh, more serious issues to talk about which will take longer to address but they are of course important too and something as small as uh, knowing the right phone number, it might seem like a, a tiny little blip on the horizon, but if you're heavily pregnant or you have some kind of, you know, something happening that you're concerned about and you want to be able to reach somebody, just having to go back and look at paperwork is enough to get you in that kind of panic mode, yeah. whereas just knowing, oh, this is exactly what I need to do. So yes, even something as small as that can be something that's really, really important. Now, yeah. I mentioned to you before that I had, um, I've just moved back up from England in the last year and several of the, the women that I worked with locally down there had you know quite difficult challenging births it wasn't always made easier by the the staff that they were involved with and for them being able to go and speak to to their local maternity voices partnership really made a huge difference it gave them closure to some degree it also meant that yes they could address some issues with the midwife or with the hospital involved but they also then had a, a softer way to be able to feel like they were really making a difference and they weren't speaking to a partnership that was defensive about what had happened before so so in that sense, what's the kind of um, the feeling, if you like, that, that people will receive when they get in touch with, with yourselves? Well, we're here and we're listening and the feedback is collected by, um, by a group of local women. And um, then we summarise that feedback or we, we pick out the important points um, and that is fed back to the committee where it's discussed and then we think about you know, what a way forward should be. We can't really go into really deeply into individual cases if it's something that really requires making an individual complaint or an investigation, then you should first of all really contact your midwife. Yeah. Um, but we can direct people to support and help in order to do that if they need to. But I think often um, women want anonymous feedback um, and that's fine. You can do that through us. You can just contact us and let us know um, what your feedback is or what your thoughts are. Sometimes people just want to make suggestions. Yeah. Um, that's really good too. 
And I guess like anything, you can have the the kind of the challenging feedback to, to hear or the more negative feedback, but then mm-hmm. there's also the opportunity for this really worked and being able to recognize what was also really good practice for for that particular hospital, for those consultants or for, for those midwives. What some of the, I've got some positive feedback that I'll share with you in a minute, but what was some of the positive feedback that, that you might expect to hear? Well, we've already had some positive feedback to say that having local scanning um, facilities has made a huge difference to to women to make it easier to get get to appointments. Excuse me. So that's really uh, uh, important. We need to know what what's good so that we can protect it and um, make sure it continues in the future. And two of my local mums have given birth at Rigmore Hospital in the last mm-hmm. well, in the last month, really. And both of them came out and said that the midwives were just amazing. They were so lovely. And I need to apologise to one of them because I'm sure that she's got nail marks in her wrist where she was holding <laughs> on to her at one point. Mm-hmm. And particularly, you know, at the moment when there's been all these restrictions in place with COVID, then having masks and things on, that can add another layer of kind of that feeling of separation between the, the midwives and the people that they're looking after. But of mm-hmm. course, midwife is is all about being with mother, with women, with, you know, with that throughout the whole experience. And so it's lovely when you hear that positive feedback and it's equally good when you've got a partnership such as yours. It's not looking to say, we don't want to hear that it's X, Y, or Z because that's negative. It's really being open enough to say, come and tell us everything that's going on because the women who have given birth, maybe not even right now, but further back, they've still got a voice to be able to make a really big difference for the future, haven't they? Yes, they have. And at the moment, you can't post on our Facebook page publicly. You can send us a private message and you will always get a reply. Um, you know, you usually get quite a short reply first. And then when we've had time to think about it, you'll get a longer, more detailed reply. And you will get to hear what's happened as a result of the feedback you've given. Um, we don't have public posting on the page at the moment because... We haven't got enough volunteers yet to moderate the page and have somebody available all the time. And I would definitely not want anyone to post on the page and have a negative comment from anybody. So, you you know, that won't happen. It's a really safe space at the moment. Um, You know, and your feedback will be anonymous unless you say, actually, I I want people to know it was me. (laughs) <laughs> we would always check that first. And in that way, the Facebook page is there as a convenience for people. It's not there as the, the platform for people to want to share publicly or to start discussing no. with other people. They're looking for that feedback to come through you and then in time yes. back into the NHS so that that is the, yeah. the kind of route for change as opposed to, I think this, but Mary next door says no. <laughs> so yeah, we're not yeah. looking for that that kind of chatty chat with everybody at the moment it's let's collate that information and then do what we what we need to do with it going forward yes that's right it is a proper partnership so it's important as well for the midwifery staff that they feel safe to hear that feedback Mm -hmm. and they know that their names are not going to be put on a facebook page either so it's that's where the partnership is it's supposed to be that we're working together with the staff in a safe way for everybody yeah, absolutely. And no, I think that's really important, and particularly in a place such as the Highlands, you know, where people are quite easily identifiable. For some people, they might have been the only person giving birth on that particular weekend, or there might yes. only be one midwife with that name. And so it's creating that that buffer and that kind of the comfort that what you say here comes in. It's confidential. It can be anonymous if you want it to be. But rest assured that that feedback will be put forward as something that can help to promote change. Maybe not even just in the hospital or the particular area that that person experienced it in, but also throughout the the other hospitals within NHS Highland. Yes, absolutely. And it's really important that people share the information that the page is there. Let all your friends, everyone you know who's having a baby, know that we're there. Everybody who's even thinking about having a baby, um, let them know that the page is there for them to use. And um, if you know of anyone who's not connected to Facebook or they haven't they haven't got access to the internet, then you can send a message on their behalf or you can let us know and we'll give them a ring on the telephone call or find a way where we can get in touch 
touch with them because we want to hear from women who are not usually giving their feedback. People who are perhaps less confident usually to do that or people who haven't got easy access to the usual channels. We want to hear from those people and we want to hear from their partners too. That's a thing because um, when partners are there with a woman having a baby, it's a really important experience in their life as well. And we want to find ways to improve things for partners. Um, we have had some comments from women who've said they're a bit concerned about their partners and the care that they need during that experience. Um, and some women who've had a difficult experience have said that, yeah, it was difficult for their partner too. And we'd love to hear from those people. We'd love to hear from those partners, from men who've been at a birth. What would help to make the experience better for partners, you know? So that's a really interesting point. Um, one of my local ladies commented that there was also a student midwife in the room when she was giving birth. And her, her phrase was that the student midwife was fantastic and she was really there more for emotional support. Now, I'm guessing in many ways that happened because she maybe didn't have such a, a defined role or as much responsibility as the, the senior midwives at the time. But just mm -hmm. for her, she recognised that having somebody there for that extra emotional support made the world of difference, particularly if her husband wasn't able to, to be with her for the, the whole of that time. And I think what you said there, Carol, around um, perhaps women who are less vocal, who are less confident in coming forward with their ideas, mm -hmm. that's a really, really important part. It's also something that we we talk a lot with, um, talk a lot about with women who are preparing to give birth is finding their voice and recognizing that at the end of the day, they can have all the medical advice coming forward, but it is their birth, their body. It can be as much their way as long as they're making a, a kind of educated decision based on the information that's presented to them so that they really understand mm -hmm. what the, the risks are, what the benefits are of doing one particular thing. And I'm, I'm sure it's it's changing and it's, it's kind of a, a work in progress as we get much more politically correct throughout the UK and throughout the world, but also recognizing that women don't need to be told you're not allowed to do this or this is how we do it here or we're gonna keep you in because you need to be induced. It's really opening up women's confidence and understanding that they it's not even about challenging those it's about having a conversation so that they understand and then that they feel that they're not having something done to them but they're being more involved in it so something as simple as knowing they've got this partnership to be able to come and talk to maybe even in advance if they're apprehensive about something is it possible to speak to you in advance of of having that you know that birth experience rather than just feedback afterwards is there a kind of buffer there for that too Women are certainly welcome to get in touch and, um, you know, let us, let us know how that birth planning process is, yeah. is going. We need feedback on that as well. And yeah. actually, a lot of people don't realise maternity services covers everything from preconceptual care yeah. right through to neonatal care, um, the first few weeks of a new baby's life. And that includes your experience on the neonatal unit if your baby needs extra care and yeah. goes to the neonatal unit so we're also interested in women's experiences of prenatal care um you know starting with preconceptual care mm. um you know did, did you get any preconceptual care would you have liked preconceptual care you know um let, let us know that's that's all yeah. part of maternity services it covers that whole journey and um yes get in touch with us if you're not not sure whether we want to hear from you just get in touch you know yeah. it's better to do that um than to sit at home and wonder should i shouldn't i if you're yeah. wondering and yes, get in touch with us. And the Scottish Government did a review of maternity services um, a couple of years ago now, and then they um, put together some recommendations, and there were over 70 recommendations that came through um, that, you know, maternity services in Scotland are working towards. Um, but um, one of the things they said was that each woman should ideally have an individual plan of care mm. you know that's that's what you were just saying Sophia yeah. so the government is is on our side as well 
One of the other things the Scottish government um, is looking at at the moment is mental health. That's been a huge issue with um, COVID, but it's also was a huge issue before that. And it's um, something that is becoming more talked about with maternity care. Organisations like the National Childbirth Trust have had their have a big campaign on what they call the hidden half, you know, half of all women with um, concerns about postnatal mood, depression, whatever you want to call it, call it. Um, don't don't say anything. Don't seek any help. That's mm. a, the hidden half, and um, so this issue is is really really important. And we've already had some feedback from women about mental health. And we want to hear more about that. Mm -hmm. And um, there are some sources of funding and there are some projects going on that the Scottish Government is is setting up and and also some things going on locally. Mm -hmm. So that's a really important issue nationally and locally at the moment. And we want to hear more about it. It's a very personal, sometimes a very private issue. I understand that. Um, But, you know, it's important to let us know about those things as well. Mm-hmm. And again, it's it's overcoming that fear of should I go with this information or should I not? One of the ladies I, I worked with um, earlier at the start of the year, she suffered from really quite extreme anxiety. She's not within the Highlands, she's, she's out with the area, but she was mm-hmm. suffered from really extreme anxiety. And she said, you know, just two weeks before her estimated due date, she phoned up the, the midwifery ward just to say, you know, um, how many fire escapes do you have? And that was really important to her. She just woke up in the middle of the night and she thought, I, I need to know where the fire escapes are. I need to know that there's enough. And it was such a burning thing for her that she said that she just knew that she she wasn't going to settle until she phoned to ask, how many fire doors are there? You know, What's the procedure to make sure it was there? Mm-hmm. And touch wood, everything was absolutely fine for her. You know, A very rare occurrence that she would need to have that information. But for her, that was really important. And it was being made to feel when she made that call that it was received mm-hmm. with a, a caring response and not a kind of, oh, don't be so stupid, you know, just dismiss it. Because mm-hmm. let's face it, there's hormones getting up to all sorts of stuff. There's definite thinking and then to some extent for some people overthinking because they want to make sure that everything for them and for their baby and for their future family is as as safe and comfortable and and welcoming as possible. I think what you said there as well is really important is involving dads or partners, same-sex relationships, whoever there is that's involved in that birth, really making sure that they are able to to come forward and, and have their input, have their say, because at the end of the day, we are, it might sound like a cliche, but we are creating the future society, the future world. And so the yeah. more that people put that input in there, then the better it can it can be. And how, um, how does that information then start to create any change, Carol? What's the, the longer term view for it? How do we know that this is not just going to be like a, a kind of talking shop? I know it's not, but how do we, how do we share with people what the process is then? Well, we have uh, we have obviously members of the NHS staff actually sitting on the on the partnership. They come to the meetings and they will be um, discussing the feedback with us. But we also have um, some representation on some of the NHS committees and, and meetings in the NHS Highland, and we will be producing a report um, when we. And we will make it a plan of our work. What we're hoping to do when we've gathered a lot of feedback together over the next few weeks is to make a plan of what are the key issues that we really need to work on over the next year. Yeah. So our aim then will be to prioritise those issues so we can take them forward. Um, you know, if you try to tackle everything at once, you can spread yourself too thinly. So we will work out what the key issues are that are going to make the most difference to the most women and all the most important issues, which is not always the same thing. <laughs> Once we've decided that, we will um, take them forward to the NHS board um, and we'll follow up on that. We won't just put the feedback forward and then leave it. You know, We'll be asking them what's happening about it mm. and trying to follow it through to some conclusion and then we'll share that information um, with the public through through our page we'll let them know what's happened 
to, to that feedback on that journey. So after every meeting um, that we have every month, I'm intending to post something on our Facebook page that lets you know what issues have we been talking about, mm. what are we going to do about them, um, and what, what's happening. So keep coming back to the page, that's a message, and have a look and see. Some women will get individual feedback if they've raised a very pertinent particular you know, issue, um, but there will be lots of general feedback for everyone to see on the page so that you'll know what's happening and what changes are coming up. And we'll also be putting some news on there as well because it's important that the page stays active and interesting. And um, we, so if you've got suggestions, what topics um, would you like to see on the page? Let us know who you want to hear from people. And I think something that you said in there that really struck home for, for me in that moment is that this partnership is only as powerful as the input that women are prepared to give or that mm -hmm. partners are prepared to give, that husbands, whoever is prepared to put in because if you're not getting the feedback to drive forward, it just becomes the people on the committee, oh, we think this. And so it's absolutely, you need that, that power, you need that input, whether it's good or bad, whether they think it's not a big deal, it might be something that they think isn't a big deal, but if another 2,000 people have already thinking it but not saying it, it can make yes. a really huge difference, can't it? Enough people with sharing their views can really help to create that change and that momentum. Yes, and sharing people's experience. This yeah. is what we call lived experience. You know, lived experience is very, very powerful feedback. It's someone's experience. And I think it's important to, to say that no one is going to make any judgment about anybody here. You know, yeah. a woman or her partner's lived experience is her experience, you know, and yeah. um, no one is going to make any judgment about whether she was underreacting, overreacting, being silly or, oh. um, you know, that 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 is not not what it's about. A woman's lived experience, her partner's lived experience is really important it's it's their experience we respect that and um we're very grateful when people share those stories um you know and often as you say one woman who's brave enough to speak up is actually speaking up for lots of other people yeah. who maybe thought the same thing you know quite a lot of the feedback we've had already is from women who've said this happened to me and Actually, I don't want that to happen to anybody else, you know. Um, they didn't make a complaint at the time. It, it, they could see why the situation had happened and, and maybe they could understand why, because maybe it was because of COVID. We've had a lot of people who've said difficult things happen because we were in the middle of the pandemic, mm. you know, and they can understand why the staff had to do things the way they did and, you know, they didn't, they didn't want to make a complaint, but actually thinking about it afterwards and reflecting on it, actually it wasn't great. And they just don't want that to happen to anybody else if it's possible to make it better. So that's a good reason for getting in touch with us if you want to make things better for other people in the future. And it might sound dramatic, but they might be making a situation massively improved for the baby they've just given birth to in another 20, 25 years. Do they want to hear the same story or the same negative experience come back from, from their child when just speaking up at that point could have made the big difference? Or also in another 25 years to say, oh, amazing, they're still doing that thing that is just so good. Then yes. again, it's, it's the good practice as well as the things of show us the areas of improvement, show us the areas that you're just finding unacceptable and then show us the things that, that we can really make a big difference to create the best possible environment for, for those babies and for those women and as much as possible for the, the dads or the birthing partners at that time. All amazing. So just to be clear, um, when people give their, their feedback to you, it can be anonymous. It will be put yes. forward anonymously and made yes. more generic if, it, if it's too specific. Um, yes. It will always be held confidentially. It's not just going to be chatted about with other random people. It will be fed back through the appropriate channels yes. and if somebody has an experience that is really in need of a reflection session with a midwife or a complaint for any reason then that should first of all go through the the hospital and through those appropriate channels 
And then at yes, some point, that information could come back to you. Yes, it should do. And um, if, so, if a woman um, contacts us and it seems that that's the case, you know, we might, we might encourage her and find some support for her yeah. to, to do that. Mm. And so you touched very briefly. To... Mm -hmm. You touched briefly at the beginning, Carol, on the the types of people that um, that will be in this in this partnership. So when a, yeah. a woman or a man types in and and sends their information through, it might be met by some members of the the general public who are either new parents themselves or who have just volunteered to, to be part of this partnership and to access that information. So they don't need to be trying to dress up their language or communicate in medical yeah. terms. It can just be, I gave birth on Saturday and this happened and I didn't like it, or I gave birth on Saturday and this was amazing. I want to say thank you so much to X, Y, and Z. You know, it can yes. be a, a, as generic and as chatty as that. And I think again, when we've got access to email and access to, to Facebook, as you mentioned earlier, that if people are not digitally connected and they want to be able to have that feedback, then you're happy to take phone calls as well or to, to have somebody yes. call back so that that information can come through. So in terms yes. of your volunteers, you're still in need of a, a kind of grind swell of volunteers with the, within a, the partnership as well, aren't you? What kind of skills might you be looking for if women want to, to get involved or men want to get involved and, and take and take this feedback? Well, we're looking for people who um, have IT skills or publicity skills, people to help us with um, the Facebook page and advertising our presence, that kind of social media kind of role. So if social media and advertising is your bag, then get in touch. Um, we also need people in their local communities just to spread the word. Um, we, we could ideally do with... Um, people involved with the partnership in all parts of the Highlands. So if there is a woman mm. who, you know, doesn't doesn't have access to the internet or um, wants to speak to somebody face-to-face, -face, socially distanced, that there might be someone in her area that she can talk to. Um, yeah. In the future, it would be nice to have people in local areas who could go along to mums groups, um, parent groups, um, the dads meet up things. I know some there was a group in Inverness that was meeting up um, on a Saturday morning, a group for dads. Um, so, you know, you can go along to those kind of groups and gather feedback, um, just talk about what we do and who we are. Um, so we need people who can do that. Um, we have a monthly meeting. Once a month, um, our, our meeting is on a Friday um, at one o'clock, the first Friday in the month. And we meet virtually on Teams. Um, so if someone wants to get fully involved, then they can. And, you know, we can come along to those meetings and help us with the real um, meat of the work, planning our work programme and taking things forward to the NHS. Um, so there's lots of different roles that people can get involved with. I had a lovely um, phone call with a, uh, a woman who wanted to give some feedback. Um, she, she contacted the page and said, could someone perhaps give her a ring because she wanted to chat in a bit more detail and it was lovely to talk to her and she was just a bit younger than perhaps um, majority of women when she had her first baby and it was really great to hear from her yeah. and um, and she said it's really important that younger women um, give their feedback as well so um, that was really positive and uh, so if you are part of a group a Facebook group or an actual group of people that meet up. Um, yeah, we, we want to hear from you and you can publicise what we're doing, let people know we're here. That's really helpful. I think what you're to know more about us, just post, post us a message and um, I'll get in touch with you. And I think what you said there is really important as well. It's it's proactively gathering that feedback and that input because that's what really helps to to shape a service. You know, we all know that that old idea that um, you're only as good as your your last customer. In this case, your last patient. Yes. And if somebody has a good meal 
they might tell a couple of people, not, I don't mean NHS food, I mean in a restaurant. If somebody has a good meal, they might tell a couple of people. But if somebody has atrocious service and finds a spider, they'll tell a hundred and they'll be straight yes. on to Facebook. This was disgraceful. And yes. so when we can gather that information a bit more proactively, then it's also going to give a, a more balanced view because mm -hmm. it's not only going to be the kind of negative, oh, this must be terrible because all of this is happening. It's also being able to, to get all of that good information through and to, yes. to really work out and shape what the best practice is and I say often to the women and to the to the couples that I work with is remembering that midwives and NHS staff and everybody that you come into contact with they might have a uniform on but they're people they're people behind that you know they might have children they might have babies they might have partners they've definitely got parents at some time along the way so yes. they're also just humans with their own kind of lived experience and yes. so finding a way as much as possible to be able to relate and, and connect with them and just sometimes it's almost stepping out of the the patient authority dynamic isn't it and recognizing mm -hmm. that you can talk on a more well how does that work and I'm interested in this and what's the benefit of this and I think when people feel like they've got more of that voice in the first place it can really help to to shape the care overall and for now having this this partnership is an amazing way to be able to do that if in hindsight you maybe think oh I'm I wish I'd asked for this or I didn't like to bother the midwife and ask about this. And so if they've got that feedback and it becomes more posters on the wall saying, ask us anything, you know, all these things make a really big difference, not just to you, but to, to everybody that, that follows you. And as we said, maybe even to your own children in the future. So really, really Every important. Every year, the um, NHS hired and sends out um, a questionnaire to all the women who've given birth over the last year and um it's quite it's quite detailed um yeah. it doesn't take too long to fill in but there are a lot of questions in it and i would encourage everyone who's had a baby in the last year to take part in that when it comes your way you know when you get sent a link to that i think it's usually on um oh, what do you call it mine's gone blank now dropbox so g drive survey oh, survey monkey yeah so it's usually on Survey Monkey, and um, it's really easy to fill in. And I would encourage everyone to fill it in if you get the chance. If you're sent that to your midwife because you've had a baby in the last year, then fill it in. But of course, it it goes to the women. It doesn't go to their partners. Yeah. Um, there are some boxes on there to just add in any other comments that you'd like to make. So that's a place where you can add in those kind of comments. Um, but often people think of their feedback when they start planning for their next baby <laughs> or when they're talking to a friend, you know, and she's just had a baby and you start talking and you say, oh, actually, yeah, that happened to me as well. You know, so sometimes that questionnaire comes and goes and then it's after that that you think of something. So that's the time to let us know. And most of the maternity units in the UK do have a maternity voices partnership. Um in other parts of Scotland and in other parts of the UK as well. But we haven't had one in Highland for quite a few years. Um, so we now do have this new one. And so it means you've now at last got access to something that people in other parts of the UK have had for quite a while. <laughs> so that's a positive thing about it as well. Absolutely. And one piece of feedback I get from every woman I've ever worked with who has given birth is that the tea and toast is the best thing in the world with proper salty <laughs> butter. <laughs> so whatever happens, we need to keep the tea and toast. <laughs> doing, right. Doing I'll, the I'll make a note of that from this morning. <laughs> <laughs> really important and preferably some gluten-free options too. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yes. So I guess the, the million dollar question, Carol, is What's the address for the Facebook page? How do people get in touch? What's the email address? How do they contact you or somebody that represents a partnership? Well, the email address is highlandmaternityvoices at gmail.com. Um, okay. And uh, that's, that's all on the Facebook page. It's going to be on the maternity notes. That's going to be added on to the maternity notes. So every woman who's having a baby should be able to find it on there. Um, the Facebook page is really easy to find. If you just search for Highland Maternity Voices, it comes up straight away. Um, and you'll see a lovely picture um, with, our, with our logo on. 
and a um, pregnant woman with a lovely um, sunset behind her mm-hmm. on the page. So it's quite easy to recognise. And um, I'm sure Sophia has got the links on her page um, yeah. from the launch and we can put them on again. So Absolutely. it is easy to find us. And if you're not sure, ask your midwife because the midwife should know about us. Um, that would be a good quiz, wouldn't it? Ask the midwife if she knows about it. I know one of the midwives in Invergordon definitely knows about it because she's very involved and has already um, suggested one of her um, women contacts us and she's done so. So, But just check. I wonder if your midwife's heard about us yet. That would be interesting. It's a test. Ask the midwife whenever you next see a midwife. <laughs> ask her, have you heard about the HMVP? <laughs> see what the yeah. feedback is in between. So we're going to have some little flyers pub printed soon, some little A5 Good. flyers as well. And unfortunately, people are not really sitting in their doctor's surgery waiting room at the moment. So it's no good putting them up on the board there. Mm. But midwives will soon have something like that, which they can hand out to people. But pieces of paper do have a habit of getting lost. So I think the best thing to do is just search Highland Maternity Voices on Facebook and you'll find us really easily. Perfect. And as we said earlier on, the the power from this partnership will come from people being willing to to input, to give their feedback, whether it's good, bad, little bit indifferent. All of that feedback is really important. And the the Facebook page Mm -hmm. and its vitality is going to come from, again, their willingness to to input and to to be involved because this is something that you know it's not something for for you to do on a rainy day it's something to to really help to make that change and to encourage women and their their partners or their husbands to come forward and, and speak up in whatever way shape or form that is and don't and be put off if english is not your first language either um i sadly don't speak anything other than english but we certainly know people or can find people who who do it would be brilliant if we could find some members of um, communities in the highlands who use other languages who would help us Um, my hubby does speak a little bit of um, of polish um, but not sufficient to conduct any kind of maternity work i'm sure <laughs> and that's a really good point you know you don't have to be from the highlands to to have your say or to be involved as a volunteer really important yes so if there are you know maybe there there are some parents out there um who could reach out to women in polish community other communities in the highlands for whom english is not their first language and help us with that so that would be really great Absolutely. Fantastic. Carol, anything else that you would like to, to add today? Anything that needs to be said that we, we haven't touched on already? Um, well, I'd just like to say thanks very much, Sophia, for inviting me to come on and talk about the partnership. Um, we've had a really good launch. We've had some nice feedback and we've had some more challenging feedback, which we will obviously be addressing. Um, we've had a couple of volunteers, people who want to get involved and help us. And and we need more. We just want to hear from you. So get into Absolutely. It's good to connect. And over the last year and everything else that's happened, it's definitely good to talk. (laughs) Yes. All good. Carol, thank you so, so much. And for everybody else, do I'll post the links down below for the the group here. So do make sure that you go and check out the page. You have your say. You remember that that page is there, even if you're just thinking about your family at the moment or if you're already Mm -hmm. pregnant, even if you had your baby a few years ago, if there's something in your mind that you think, oh, I wish I'd said I can't remember the name of the midwife. How do I feed that back now? All the the kind of chitter chatter that happens in your mind, then this is a a forum where you can come in and and have your say and really make that point. So thank you so, so much. I will just uh, hit end on this for now. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.